we go about a month beyond petal fall and you'll start to see those shoots starting to elongate again. You know, one of the things that I, I judge in terms of soil fertility is, is how much annual shoot growth do we get? And with a bearing orchard, I'm looking for shoot growth on the order of like 12, 18 inches. If it's a whole lot more, it's probably way too much nitrogen and you're probably having disease problems. And if it's a whole lot less, things are a little bit stagnant and you're probably not getting much for production. So that's another way you can kind of just judge soil fertility. But the point here is that things are growing up top because the feeder root flush has ended. And if you are working with dwarf trees, be it in a garden or you're, you're doing cover crop strips along the edges of those trees to, to lessen competition, we can talk a little more about that. Summertime is a really good time to tie into that because those feeder roots and the mycorrhizae reaching up into the humus layer, well, that's all withdrawn back now. So the month of July is not a bad time to plant a successive cover crop, if that's how you're working your orchard. We go into second, third week of August, and the terminal bud sets at this point in time. That means the shoot stops elongating. And that's, that's an important point in the fruit tree cycle because we don't want to mess with winter hardiness. So when the terminal bud sets, the wood tissue is going to get hardy to prepare for the cold to come. And it's going to work its way back down through the branches and down through the trunk. So this is why we don't prune apple trees in late, late summer. We do summer pruning in that first week of August, but beyond that, we don't want to invigorate growth. This is why we don't apply nitrogen, be it foliar fish or rich compost in that August, early September window. We don't want to stimulate growth. We don't want to interfere with the hardiness. Like a quick question, uh, I'm assuming you're talking about where you live. Yeah, I may not have the timing right here. Right. You can help. Uh, we, I usually teach people, you know, pruning June, July, maybe August. But uh, if you're pruning maybe up until the first week of August, we could probably push it a little bit here. Possibly. I don't, okay, I'm just I don't totally know. There that. could be someone who knows that better. <coughs> But anyway, terminal bud is set, shoot has stopped growing. That indicates that the fall feeder root hat flush has begun. And that feeder root flush is going to last 14, 16, 18, 20 weeks. It can continue under the first snow cover up north. This is when those nutrients are being gathered that are going to be in the cambium and in the buds and in the twigs to drive next spring's growth. And in terms of what am I doing in the orchard then, we're going to get into when to spread compost. And I am primarily doing it when most of the leaves have come off the tree, particularly when I'm talking about diseases like apple scab and pear scab, because those are diseases that are gonna overwinter on the fallen leaves. So the more I can get those leaves to decompose, the more I'm gonna have less potential inoculum to cause disease the next year. And knowing that the feeder roots are gathering nutrients, well, what is compost? Not just biology, but it's also nutrients, ideally in a bioavailable form. And we'll get into that, but that's why there's this timing. It's all driven by what are the feeder roots doing? What, what's the tree doing? How can we supplement that action? Or how can we abet what its goals are in terms of working in the orchard? Mm -hmm.